welcome to End Goals, an LCMS Youth Ministry podcast. I'm host Reverend Mark Kiesling, and I'm with DCE Juliana Schultz. We are here to bring parents, church workers, and lay leaders discussions and resources to help your youth ministry meet its end goal, which is young people who are disciples of Jesus Christ for life. Today, we're going to be talking about supporting college students and preparing youth for the transition to college. Summer is coming to a close. Yes, yes. I don't know. It still feels like summer outside, but <laughs> fall is in the air. The pumpkin spice latte is back. Uh, uh, school years have started, and with that comes the amazing transition and growth in the lives of young people of all ages. You have youth entering their junior and senior mm-hmm. years who are looking into what they might do after high school. You might be missing seeing the faces of your seniors who are now off to college and have the joy and worry that comes with that major change as young people uh, make that transition and after you've loved and served them for for many years. Absolutely. It's been fun to talk to some new college students and talking about the excitement of being on a college campus and all the new things they're getting used to. As we know, college is a major transition in the life of a young person. Even if a young person is staying close to home for college, their friends and their support systems change and so many other things too. They have a new level of independence uh, where they are choosing how to eat, maybe when to sleep or how to sleep and take care of all those things and certainly to manage their time as well. And while we hope we have prepared them well, we know that they're going to face many new academic and intellectual challenges on a college campus. And college students' home congregation can play a key role in supporting students who are away from home. Prayer, care packages, connecting them with the new congregation. We've seen lots and lots of ways that congregations care for college students and their walk in Christ. And we saw in our research a few years ago that young people who remained in the LCMS into young adulthood were twice as likely to say their church ministered to them during those times of transition compared to those who had completely left the church. We also saw that young people went through a major decline in connection to the church when they went to college. And certainly some uh, connect strongly to a church during college or some follow or return following college. Uh, However, too many for us, Mm -hmm. (laughs) as we Mm -hmm. looked at that, uh, left the church and did not return. And we know that that disconnection can happen for a number of reasons. Some young people may be actively looking to disconnect from traditions and communities from their childhood. Others may be at campuses that don't offer a lot of opportunities to maybe get connected to a church or a Christian community. And others really had no intention of leaving the church at all. But as they learned to navigate college life, the importance of worship or being in a Christian community just got pushed out of their schedule. And we want to do our part to help congregations and campus ministries prepare young people for college and to also prioritize their walk with Jesus. And we also want to minister to current college students during this wonderful time of life. And we are blessed to have someone with us who serves young people on both sides of this major transition. Ron Dupree is a DCE who serves as the Director of Youth and College Ministries at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Denton, Texas, and he served there for the last 21 years. Ron serves youth and families at the church, as well as students at the University of North Texas and Texas Women's University. Ron is a graduate of Concordia University, Irvine, and a current graduate student at Concordia Irvine's Townsend Institute for Executive Coaching and Consulting. Ron has served at three other LCMS congregations in Hayward and Ucapa, California, and Olympia, Washington. When there is free time, he enjoys restoring an old Corvette, motorcycle riding and dirt biking, and most importantly, spending time with his children and grandchildren. Welcome, Ron. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here with you. And like I said before, I'm very humbled to be asked to be on this podcast. So thank you for the invitation. You bet. So we got to hear about you briefly in the intro, but tell us more about your vocations, your roles in youth and college ministry, and other things that bring you joy. Well, I would say a lot of it uh, uh, would be uh, just kind of the day-to-day things that uh, happen uh, as a full-time uh, youth ministry, college ministry director. Um, we also have a uh, learning center uh, at our church, so I uh, get to see the kids um, every day, um, from two years of age to fifth grade, um, every day, just waving at me, asking me silly questions. Um, uh, why are you wearing that shirt today? I was like, I don't know. Just it's, it's felt fun today. And uh, I thought maybe I'd get that question from you. So just, uh, just the little lighter side of things that, uh, kind of make my day. It's, uh, the kids that are in our learning center. Um, the, uh, other parts of my roles would also include uh, um, the taking care of our uh, website, uh, doing social media. Um, children's lessons on Sunday are always a fun thing. Mm-hmm. Um, making that uh, discussion transition from talking to a three-year-old to a 23-year-old <laughs> does offer some challenges at times, as you all know. 
Um, so I always have to kind of uh, categorize what my conversations are going to look like ahead of time, uh, just so I'm given the right answer and uh, not getting blank stares. Um, <laughs> there's uh, um, also uh, part of my uh, uh, just kind of filling in to help as we're trying to get our tech team going for our uh, worship services. I help with our live streaming of our worship services on Sunday as well, too. So I kind of run the whole gamut from A to Z, it seems like. And I think that's just what ministry is. So um, the uh, biggest joy I have is just seeing um, some of these kids, uh, you know, being in one place that I have for so long, just seeing them from when they were in our learning center and in our early Sunday school years, uh, age three, even age two, um, going into uh, college and off to another campus. And then when they come back, it's just a joy just to see all those uh, life stages that they've been through. And uh, I'm just honored to be a part of all of those life stages with them. So that uh, I think is the most rewarding thing for me, um, just to still have the connection with some of these kids after so long. Now they're adults. Right. That's fantastic. That's great. Well, one of the things we love to hear from ministry leaders as you're reflecting on the ways that you could invest in young people is to think back maybe to middle school or high school years and to talk about maybe some key moments or maybe key people in your life that kept you connected to the church and encouraged you in your walk with Jesus. I would say it's probably, uh, um, the most part, just my best friends. Um, so I went to uh, Redeemer Lutheran School in Denver. Colorado and attended Trinity Lutheran Church, which did not have a uh, uh, a school. So my Sunday church friends and uh, uh, activities were different from the kids that I went to school with uh, Monday through Friday. Um, so during the middle school years, uh, my friends who I saw every day of the week, uh, not seeing them on the weekends, we said, hey, what if we kind of went to each other's youth groups? Um, cause they seem to be at different times. So it really wasn't a conflict. Um, but, uh, still having my best friends and then also having them part of my church life as well too. And then kind of the, the mixing or the blending of, uh, those different friendships, I think really encouraged me cause, um, you know, some of these friends I, I started to know later on in the grade school years going into middle school. Uh, but then my other friends I've known since, uh, way early, like kindergarten, first grade. So we all just kind of grew up together. Um, another key component was um, a, uh, a volunteer that basically just took youth ministry under his wing. Uh, he was a businessman, ran his own business. Um, and his name was John. And uh, I remember when the youth gathering was in Denver in 1989, yeah. And we had all the bags packed. We left the church and he's like, wait, hold on. I just need to run by the office and uh, just take care of something. And we were just kind of sitting in his car waiting. He just needed to make a few business calls and uh, then just jumped right in the car and we headed off to the Marriott or wherever it was we were <laughs> staying. And um, that just told us that we were important, yeah. but uh, we also understood that, you know, he, he was making some sacrifices and, mm -hmm. um, needing to just still get some things done, but uh, he was ready for that next week of National Youth Gathering for us. Um, and I think we all appreciated the fact that, uh, you know, he could just still be doing business and not spending any of his time with us, but he saw the value of having um, that relationship with us and the youth group. And I think that's always been an encourager for me that, um, you know, someone who's so busy still took the time just to care and to be present uh, with us. So I think that was another um, facet to uh, what added to my career path, for wow. sure. Especially being a senior, just graduated and going to a youth gathering, heading to Concordia in a few months. I think that just really uh, um, turned the volume up for me. That's fantastic. That's so what do you love about working with young people and young adults in your congregation, in your community? Oh, they, uh, they always have uh, a smile on their face. Sometimes they have uh, a bit of a chip on their shoulder sometimes too. And I have to ask them, Hey, what's up? What's going on? Um, and, uh, you know, as a young adult, I think a problem can be really big for them. 
as we've kind of gone through that ourselves as adults, older adults, uh, we can say, hey, maybe that's more of a simpler uh, problem that I wouldn't stress out about. But uh, for a college student who's on their own, it's it's a big deal. So um, I just like being able to uh, walk through those situations with them uh, to be uh, uh, in a mentoring role at uh, some point to, you know, to just kind of expand on whatever's going on in their life, just to maybe walk through that with them a little longer and a little closer, uh, just to kind of give them encouragement and help them find solutions. Um, I also enjoy just, uh, again, seeing how some of these uh, students that I've known for so long, just taking these different steps, going from confirmation into high school years, and then if they're sticking around in Denton for, for college, uh, that I still get to continue that with them. Um, the other enjoyable part I really like having is when they do go away to say Texas Tech or um, Sam Houston uh, here in Texas, or you know even further out, I know there's a few that go to OSU. Uh, when they come back, we just make sure they know what's going on when they get back, that they can be included. Uh, like for our Christmas caroling, you know, make sure that they know ahead of time when we're doing things. So it's not a surprise. They don't miss out on it, um, that they are missed, um, that we look forward to seeing them when they return back to town. So, um, so those are, I, I'm probably just all over the map right now with all of this, but, um, those are the things I really enjoy. I just really like being able to see them kind of taking those first steps of adulthood yeah. and, uh, um, coming back stronger, um, kind of going through the fire, you know, of uh, living life. And I think they come back a little more seasoned and a little more mature. And I like to just, after a few months pass, you know, you don't see them and you just, for those that uh, go away for school, um, you definitely notice that change um, more easily. Yeah. That's great. Well, you get to work with college students, like sitting in those different parts of, of their life as they're uh, making that transition and having those exciting uh, opportunities to grow as young people and build in their independence. Uh, but we also certainly see too that college can be a stressful time for students. Um, they're moving away from home perhaps, or and they're definitely for sure making new friends. They're finding a new support system. They're trying to survive studies um, and introduce to these new worldviews and intellectual knowledge as well. From your work with them, uh, what would you say are maybe the biggest challenges college students face today? Has this maybe changed in recent years? And how do these issues affect their spiritual lives and relationship with the church? So um, when uh, we've got like the summer months, like right after uh, uh, school ends in May, uh, we start to get um, uh, people visiting our church and just kind of wanting to see what Denton is like. They may have a student orientation at one of the campuses. And uh, um, that's usually when I'll see the parents, you know, they walk in the doors with their student, their child, and um, they, I, they, they have high hopes that their child's going to be attending every single Sunday and participating in every single activity. And, uh, I can see the look on some of the students' faces were like, oh, mom and dad are making me do this, mm -hmm. you know. Um, well, sure, yeah, your parents are making you do this, but we want to encourage you to make your faith your own, and we want to help you with that. Um, I've seen students, I've listened to them when they've been on campus in their classrooms, and um, they're bombarded with uh, just this... Uh, secularist uh, ideal of things and um, when students are sharing their faith or their worldview in the classroom not only do they have st uh, students um, basically attacking them you know for their faith or their worldview but uh, even the professor at time has chimed in and basically said there's no room for that kind of uh, message to be shared in the classroom it has nothing to do with what we're studying you know so that's uh something that becomes very uh, discouraging they're like why am i here why am i at this college um you know how do i deal with um these challenges i'm just trying to learn but i also want to integrate what my life is into what i'm studying and i've got a professor or fellow students that won't accept that so uh so that that's a that's a tough thing i think we really need 
to help our students, middle school and high school, uh, understand what worldviews are out there versus what a Christian worldview is. Um, another one is uh, um, just the whole gender dysphoria thing that's going on right now. I mean, that has really um, shaken a lot of uh, people, um, households. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that um, us as a congregation or as a whole church body denomination, you know, how do we really just help people to understand who they are in God's image and that um, God did not create us to be a mistake, but, you know, that we are who we are in his eyes. Um, yeah, those are kind of the, the big ones right now, uh, other than uh, the idea of the cost of things, finding a job, finding a house. Uh, I remember uh, uh, Pastor Donsbach, he was our senior pastor, our sole pastor from the 50s into about the 90s. And so he was taking uh, youth ministry and uh, college ministry, but he really embraced the college ministry part of it. And way back then, the parents dropped the kids off. They didn't have any mode of transportation to travel back home on the weekends. Yeah. If they had a three-day weekend or just the way their classes lined up, uh, they were still stuck here in Denton. And so it was a better place for the church to accommodate and to uh, offer more to them just to make them feel at home. Mm -hmm. uh, now we've got uh, students that have their own cars or they have uh, many other activities that just fill their time. It, it's uh, one of the challenges I see is uh, either they're not present on the weekends to do activities or their midweek is so busy with band or sports or uh, just the demands of some of the courses they take that uh, it, it's difficult to uh, get them all in one place at one time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, certainly we know there are intellectual challenges, there are challenges to their worldview, practical challenges um, mm -hmm. that are around that. What are some key learnings that parents and congregations can provide for high school students as they prepare for that transition? And then maybe what are some tangible ways that they can walk alongside students as they make that transition? So, uh, yeah, we're uh, beginning confirmation class tomorrow night. So I'm going to put that confirmation <laughs> hat on and uh, say that parents need to be the primary faith leader and teacher in their home. Uh, I think that's just the most uh, um, important thing that uh, the parents embrace what they expect their sixth, seventh or eighth grader to be doing at this life stage and not just drop them off at the door, parent DCE or the, the pastor of the DCE are going to teach them everything they know for the rest of their life in, in three years or two years, whichever the program. Uh, but that parents are fully engaged in their uh, confirmation uh, years, but uh, also um, just regular Bible study, devotion time at home, uh, creating those habits that need to be formed. Mm -hmm. um, because if they don't have that in place, uh, it's not going to be found in the college years. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing, too, is to really prioritize uh, faith life. Um, my uh, children's message that was going along with Matthew 16, um, you know, what are you going to forfeit, um, you know, to uh, follow Christ, to take up your cross? You know, this was our part of our lectionary on Sunday. And I just kind of did a little mathematical uh, thing there. and. Uh, uh, more for the parents than it was for the three-year-olds or four-year-olds, you know, like how many, how many hours are in a week, you know, I don't know. But uh, um, for us adults, you know, we know there's uh, a lot of hours in the week and sometimes not enough. But if a child or a family went to church every Sunday and uh, went to uh, Sunday school every Sunday, you know, so that would be eight hours, you figure. That's still 1% of that whole time that you are um, devoting to your, your Christian life, not to include, of course, uh, um, the other things going on in life, like school and homework and sports and band practice and cheerleading and whatever else there might be, but really to make a priority 
of your faith life. Um, you know, still do those things that God has placed in your life that are uh, achievements and the things that you want to succeed in, but uh, don't let those uh, take your focus off of God. So I think uh, to kind of just finalize that, you know, just parents really need to be involved in the child's faith life. Don't just hand it off to the pastor or the DCE or uh, um, if you have a missionary that's working in your congregation, uh, don't just rely on them. The parents need to take the responsibility of their child's faith life. We've certainly seen where <clears throat> parents can be that glue uh, through all those transitions. Uh, yes. And also be great examples too to young people that when they face transitions in life, the parents do that. You know, they focus on that foundation that is Jesus and the church through all those things to be strengthened, find relationships and connections, as well as be fed on God's word and sacrament. What a beautiful thing that is. And their mm -hmm. walk with Christ. Uh, you you mentioned a little bit about what you do to support um, students who grew up at St. Paul and then went off to maybe Oklahoma State, other schools um, outside of Denton. Um, and so I wanted you to talk a little bit more about that, how you support those students who are away from Denton but grew up through your youth ministry. But also maybe you could probably get to see some great things, too, of students who come from other congregations to uh, Denton for college. And you get to see their home congregation still supporting them. What are some suggestions you might give to like a home congregation to support college students who are away from home or maybe even um, uh, close to home as well? Yeah. So I would uh, say, you know, one of the, the fun things would be, you know, just a care care package, just to, um, just remind them they're not alone on the little island. They are uh, way away from home. Um, you know, just a, a text message, um, you know, that that's just the simplest technology you have just to uh, send a little uh, hand waving uh, emoji uh, just say, hey, we're still thinking about you. Uh, we miss you. We're praying for you. Uh, you know, what's something we can pray for while you're away that we may not know what's going on? Um, we won't hear back from you or at least see you in face to face, you know, for another few months. But what are some things that we can pray for you? Um, simple things like uh, um, prayer petitions on Sunday, just to make sure uh, the pastor uh, can, you know, just offer a petition for our students who are away. Uh, just to remind people where they are and uh, uh, who they are, because uh, uh, some people say, well, where's so-and-so? It's like they went to college two years ago. You know, some people just don't really pay attention or uh, um, are, are focused on that. So it would be helpful just to have them uh, be reminded of uh, these students are not just ditching church. They are uh, working towards a degree mm -hmm. um, to uh, also have. Um, the ability to uh, communicate with the other pastors at the other congregations that these uh, students come from, you know, just maybe some open communication. Uh, you know, if they're having a difficult time, maybe that difficult time has followed them to campus uh, from where they were before. So maybe they're just dealing with some family issues that maybe um, one person may not have been able to help them through, but maybe someone else or a fellow student might be able to kind of uh, help with that. Um, but, uh, um, you know, still asking permission uh, of the students, say, hey, you know, you mind if we, you know, just kind of uh, see if there's any way we can help you further, you know, and if we can um, ask some others that you might know that uh, might have some insight. Uh, with um, special events, you know, that we have at the church, just make sure students are involved. We do an Oktoberfest. We do an Arts and Jazz Fest with the city of Denton. Um, just to let them know that, hey, we've got a booth out there. Yeah, we always need people to help, you know, but also we want you to be there just to be a part of this uh, fun celebration moment as well, too. Um, we also have uh, some of the students help with ushering. Many of our students are part of the music school at UNT, so they are incorporated into our worship services, playing trumpet, oboe, singing in the choir, doing handbells, those kinds of things which is probably from their culture of when they grew up in their own home congregation, they may miss that or they want to feel that connection. So they uh, can at least feel connected uh, at their, their, uh, their college church home. As we 
look at this generation of students, I think we see more of them who are um, opting to go to maybe a community college or a college that's closer to home because there is less expense attached to that oftentimes. Um, how do you, or if you, as you have students that are, are um, transitioning to college, but also staying in your town, how do right. you uniquely care for those students um, and is the church's relationship any different with that student once they transition into college? Oh, uh, yeah, that's kind of a loaded question because, uh, yeah, there will be, uh, you know, just some of our members who will be like, oh, yeah, they're in high school. They can't do this or that. I was like, they're in college now. You know, there's just, again, there's sometimes that disconnect or that need for a gentle reminder that, uh Kids do grow up and they become adults and uh, they're ready to serve the church in a different way. Uh, I would say that um, uh, for those that do stay around and uh, that would be my own children, uh, my two boys and two girls, they all attended uh, local colleges, UNT, TWU, uh, also our junior college, uh, North Texas Central College. Um, down in Corinth. So it's a little bit further away, but uh, a lot of our students will commute down there and at least get their uh, general ed courses out of the way before they uh, um, transfer to UNT or TWU. So, um, so yeah, really, I kind of work with three different campuses or at least students of three campuses. So I tend to place them in positions of maybe as an advisor to other students that have come in just to kind of say, hey, this is kind of what we do. This is what this congregation does. These are the places around town that are fun. These are the places around town, just don't visit. Uh, also with some of the students that are in town, when we need to have like representation with our student organization, those are the ones I turn to just because we have to have the student IDs for the students who are enrolled to be able to uh, work with like our student unions to be able to get them to establish or keep established uh, student union present or a uh, student organization presence on campus. So, so that would be the main thing just because they're around, they're not going anywhere. Uh, but we don't exclude students who are here for four years from being in any kind of leadership role. Uh, we just know that we have a starting point at least. Uh, we can start with those students who are, who are there. Um, the other portion of that was to, uh, to help them take more leadership responsibilities, not just within our LCMSU or Lutheran Student Fellowship Organization, but also, uh, within the congregation to serve on our leadership teams, or if you want to call them boards, our action teams, that way these boards or teams that have generally just had kind of an older viewpoint to actually have someone who's been around the, uh, the the church growing up in the congregation and can have some sort of continuity, but also uh, maybe some new ideas too that maybe some of these uh, leadership teams have not heard before. Um, sometimes that gets filtered out when you ask someone, hey, what's your opinion on this? And that kind of gets filtered out or filtered down by the time it gets to council. Um, so if you actually have that person's opinion sitting on that board, I think it goes a lot further, has more value. Uh, another thing, too, would be uh, not just in the congregation, but uh, I like to have our college students involved in local ministries uh, or at least connecting with local things. Uh, one of my students who attended TWU um, was very connected with like city of Denton. So he would help our organization get involved and keep Denton beautiful, basically a, a cleanup day that was whole city wide. And we got involved in that. And so just exposure to our name, uh, our organization and our congregation as well too. So uh, those are uh, some of the things uh, just within the congregation, outside the congregation. And, and of course on their campus as well too, just so that, uh, um, not just the LCMSU name is known or Lutheran Student Fellowship, but also St. Paul Denton is known uh, in the community. What I love too for those students that you know, maybe are staying close to college are also going to start careers close to Denton that keeps that ongoing relationship with St. Mm -hmm. Paul's and with the Christian community so that they can continue to be the thing as they transition in life. They know where 
that relational connection has where they can be fed spiritually is such an awesome thing to connect with them in different phases of their life um, as yes. well. Yeah. So you've, you've been able to talk about a lot of examples of what you do in campus ministry for students um, in Denton. I just want to talk in general, if there's anything else that you would lift up that are some important components of what you do in campus ministry uh, for college students. And then also maybe for some of our uh, people who are listening, who are in a situation where they can maybe start some campus ministry, maybe where would you suggest they start? You had a real practical thing about having a student rep that might be the gateway by which they can get listed um, as a, you know, a person who can be providing a, a student activity or something like that. But what are some other things you might give as an example of what, where someone might start? Um, sometimes it's just simply uh, listening to the students. If you have a group of students that are just graduated, they're, they're staying around town. Uh, I don't even exclude students who are, I should say not students, but they're recent high school graduates. You know, they're still working. They're still wanting to be connected to a group. So I think my model is, yeah, we'll still have a student organization, but we still have students that uh, work in town. And then we have non-students who still work in town, but they're still connected with the congregation. And I didn't want to have a separate group saying, hey, these are the people who are going to school and these are the people who aren't. So I wanted them to be blended together. So uh, so if anyone is uh, wanting to start a college ministry, I would say also uh, to include those who are not attending college at the time. They're still working. They're still trying to figure out what their path is, uh, where they want to invest all this money of education uh, for a future career. So uh, with both of those um, students and non-students in the same group, uh, it is an encourager for those who are not yet in college to at least start getting the process of enrolling, encourage them to really start thinking what their career path might be and that comes from other students. You know, they, they all talk to each other differently than they would talk to us. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they talk to their peers. Uh, also, uh, check out, uh, as you would probably suggest, to, you know, get a charter or a chapter started with uh, LCMSU uh, just so other students can find you. Uh, that would be the big thing as well. Uh, just, you know, if it's a town gown ministry, or if it's uh, sponsored by a district, uh, like a LCMS district, to uh, have a really big campus ministry, you know, start talking with your te Texas district representatives as well to to uh, see how maybe they can help fund you or at least get you some um, sort of uh, uh, support to get that ministry going. And the biggest thing also is communicating with. Uh, the Texas district about which students are attending where I know years ago I would get postcards and I know postcards is not a thing anymore, but <laughs> they would come in the mail and it'd be a really thick envelope or sometimes not so thick. It'd be a little bit thinner, but these orange postcards would come from either Texas district or I think even Senate at the time. Mm -hmm. And it would say, this is a student who has suggested they are attending university of North Texas or TWU. And this was their contact information. So that was a wonderful start for me every school year to have this information. So uh, another thing maybe would be to tap into a local like DCE uh, uh, cluster group mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. saying, Hey, you know, I want to start a campus ministry. Do y'all have students that will be attending a university locally that uh, our congregation would like to reach out to? Uh, sometimes it just starts with that. Another yeah. thing that we had with, uh, our campus ministry directors, and this is probably 15, 20 years ago, we would meet just as DCEs meet around high school, middle school, youth ministry, we'd have campus uh, DCE clusters or even uh, pastors uh, in these groups so we could share ideas, try to do like regional events, those kinds of things. I'd really like to see that kind of uh, process come back because I think a lot of people in college ministry, campus ministry, feel like they're on an island right now where mm -hmm. there's not that connection like we had with and still do have with our DCEs and uh, pastors, youth ministers, uh, whether they are uh, called or a volunteer. Uh, we get together every month. We have that support network. We get to reach out to each other and share ideas and, and come up with solutions together. 
I think that's what's lacking in campus ministry right now is we don't have that kind of uh, uh, gathering. So I would encourage someone to find one or two other campus ministry leaders and just glean ideas from them, see what uh, works, what doesn't work. And because uh, each region is going to be different, too. Everyone's going to have different uh, reasons to do what do what they do. Um, and it may not be the same thing in New York as it is for California or Texas or Illinois. So uh, yeah. but uh, those would be the things. Uh, reach out to other people uh, in campus ministry, get their ideas. Also, listen to the students and, and see what they want to do, what their goals are. Yeah. And like you said, the campus ministry is going to look different on every campus mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and in every location. Uh, but we appreciate you kind of giving your insight to uh, from where you're at. Uh, what final words of encouragement would you give to parents, church workers, or lay people who are considering ways to support college students um, or students in their community looking for a church home? Uh, let's see here. Um I would say, you know, that it's worth it, um, that, uh, that that's what's kept me here for uh, at least two decades. I tried uh, and started a campus ministry because it was the same kind of thing. It was a couple of students, just a few, uh, that just got out of high school and they're like, what do we do now? I'm like, well, let's figure it out together. Let's see what we want to do. We start off with some fun activities. We say we want to have a midweek Bible study or maybe a a group that meets on Sunday during Bible class time uh, just to uh, um, meet and get to know each other, stay connected. I think that's got to be the uh, the main thing is just for everyone to stay connected to each other and to Christ so that we can be encouragers to each other and uh, help us grow in God's word. Um, I guess the other encouragement would be uh, just always uh, turn to prayer in these uh, situations where you're not sure about a particular uh, path or direction you want to to go with campus ministry. Um, you know, prayer is always going to have answers for us, whether it's a yes or no answer. Um, you know, also turn to your senior pastor too and see what uh, his his idea or his vision might be for it, and. Uh, gain his support to go uh, on this path with uh, starting a campus ministry. Uh, For those students who find a campus ministry that is active and going, uh, make full use of it. Um, We're there to support and to love each other, uh, to help each other walk through some of these uh, difficult times in life. Um, Starts at a very young age. You know, you're talking 18 or 19. Even some kids are still 17 and they're already entering the college years and can be a scary time, especially when you're talking about financial things, survival things like food and, uh, you know, how do I get another job to support this endeavor that I'm on? I'm already throwing loads of money at the university and now I just need something to at least survive on. So, uh, so lots of scary things and scary moments uh, in the college years, but they're also very valuable years too, where you, uh, just make lifelong friends, uh, potential of meeting a spouse. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just just all these things um, are very important at this stage. That's great. Well, thank you for all your insight and the ways that you serve there at St. Paul and Denton. I'm thankful for the way you invest in young people and I certainly keep connected them through that years of transition into college ministry and care for college students as well. God bless your continued work. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you both for hosting me on this. Well, as we said, that transition from post high school into college is such an important time in a young person's life. Um, And we certainly talk about too, like as Ron said, young people are not just transitioning to college, but they're going into career, they're going to military service. So there's many ways that are going to be, their lives are going to be changing. And so we're just thankful for congregations that do a great job of preparing their young people for that. And and parents are obviously such a key part of that. Um, But then also continue to minister with them like that. It doesn't end uh, when they graduate and move on, but we care for them. Um, And it really, I think put some focus on that transition time. Like that is a monumental time in their life that we are doubling down on our investment in them and staying connected with them and maybe passing them off well to a campus ministry in the location where they may be. And so thankful for all those that jump into that, provide those places, and then also can continue to encourage their young people. 
Juliana, we got a lot of stuff with LCMSU uh, that helps congregations do that. Can you walk us through maybe a little bit, just some of those nuts and bolts administratively yeah. ways that churches that might be interested in uh, having a campus ministry or helping their young people find campus ministries, what can they find on the LCMSU website or social media and other things? Yeah, we are so excited that there's a, a couple of different ways that people can connect. The first one is if you are a church or a district supported campus ministry um, that is out there that is supporting young people, uh, you have any kind of active uh, mm-hmm. group of college students, we want you to register as an LCMSU chapter. And you heard Ron reference that. Um, an LCMSU chapter just means free. You yep. fill out a, a really easy form. I promise it'll take you maybe five minutes. Um, and then we take that information and we make it publicly available on our website so that uh, when a student is looking at different colleges, they can identify um, where to connect with other college students and in, in other Lutherans um, in the area. So uh, it's a great way. Plus, it gets your name on our registration so that we're able to then email you updates periodically and connect with you um, with other pieces that might help you. So it might, if we have Bible studies, if we have service opportunities, mm-hmm. specifically for college students, LCMSU chapters are going to get that information. And then uh, we're going to, we had an annual mm-hmm. <laughs> conference or we're mm-hmm. trying to have an annual mm-hmm. conference mm-hmm. Uh, for those who are leading the campus ministries. So we'll call it a staff conference is what we call it. Um, to, to happen in May. We're still working on some of those details, but that information will come out soon. So if you're starting in that road and you're not really sure you don't necessarily have the support, this is a great opportunity for you to connect with other people who are doing campus ministry for a few days. It's really low cost. Uh, and the idea is that we can support you. We can uh, give some excellent uh, breakout sessions and speakers who are going to help encourage you. Um, and you'll get a great chance to network and all of that. And so uh, get that uh, on your calendar mm-hmm. <laughs> as soon as mm-hmm. we get that there. And then the final one is that we do have a student information form. Uh, Ron mentions these postcards that he used to get. <laughs> uh, we've digitized to that. And so what that means is uh, that a parent, a church worker, or the student themselves can go on to our website, fill out a form with contact information, uh, tell us where they're heading, and we will get that. And then we forward it on to that campus ministry so that leader can make a connection with that student. Um, and then the student has doesn't have to be the first one to reach out, which can be kind of awkward for students. It can be hard to mm-hmm, be mm-hmm. Uh, just step onto a, a church campus. But um, this is a great way for uh, our students to get connected. Now, we don't want people to send people's private information without their permission, but certainly if you have permission, uh, feel free to send that. There's also descriptions if you can't find an LCMSU chapter locally uh, to where that student is going, how to find uh, a congregation that might be really encouraging for them uh, on our locator as well. So, Yes, and Ron mentioned, uh, he was talking about the Texas district specifically where they're at. You might be in a district too that has really strong campus ministry and connecting students to uh, maybe a chapel that you've got at maybe a large state university or other places. So don't forget that as a resource as well. Just reach out to the district office and they should be able to give you that uh, information to be able to connect. I believe Missouri and Michigan have that as well. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. uh, we love supporting campus ministries. Um, and we just know there's, it's so important. Like, uh, we heard Ron say, uh, they're being challenged in so many ways. They're doing so many things for the first time. It can be really overwhelming. And even the best prepared students, uh, even the most connected students in your home congregation can really struggle in those times. Uh, and we want to be able to help them make that transition well. Yep. And as we say too, um, you know, we do, we do see that challenge for them that as the home congregation, that, they are members of your church unless they have, yeah. um, you know, officially moved out and, and changed their membership. And so please continue to lift them up in prayer, find ways to encourage them. You know, if you got, again, people that champion them, that they are sending them care package and coordinating that, just sending them, you know, again, notes of that they're in prayer and being thought of um, go a long way. And I love how Ron talked about too, when they come back home, they, some, I, mean, I feel like there are some colleges now that have month breaks. Yeah. In the middle, you know, yeah. whether it's around Christmas or whatever, like that's a long time being at home. Like make sure they know what's going on around the holidays and things too, that, so they can be incorporated and welcome back in at the, uh, at the community, back in their home congregation. I'm uh, just thankful for people who take the time to do that. One of those places that you can look if you're looking for resources is going to be Youth eSource. Uh, we have a special section just for our young adults and college students. Um, so if you're looking for particularly Bible studies, or even we have listed there, um, everything you're going to need to do, uh, cards that can go out to your college mm-hmm. students. So we have it all prepped out for you. Uh, so great 
resources there as well. So some closing questions for you to consider. How are you preparing your young people for that transition after high school? How are you keeping college students who grew up in your congregation in prayer and connected to your home congregation? And how can you listen to what college students need and help support them in that transition? We will continue to keep you in our prayers as you support college students and prepare teens for this major transition. May God use you to confirm their church loves them and wants what's best for them. End Goals Podcast is a production of LCMS Youth Ministry and KFUO Radio. To find out more about LCMS Youth Ministry or to find links to resources mentioned, go to kfuo.org slash youth ministry. Thank you for listening and caring for the young people and college students at your church. 